please sit down. Once again, we thank God for today. It's been a wonderful day. It's been a blessed day. This day is a day which you believe God has decided to bless us. I therefore greet all of you, both those of you watching us outside and those who are inside here, whatever part of the world or this diocese that you are watching us, I greet you all in Jesus' name. I want to believe that the Lord Almighty has been blessing you in this program. He has been blessing me. He's been speaking to us in different ways and in different languages. And we thank him because he is God. To him alone, the glory, dominion, and power in the name of Jesus Christ. I will keep thanking our Father in God the Archbishop of this province, of this, I wanted to see the Bishop of this diocese, and I started saying what nobody sent me. My Lord Bishop, thank you so much again for inviting me. You know, in the house of Bishop, we have close to 200 bishops, so if you are invited, you will be grateful. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank God for your ministry. God bless you richly in Jesus' name. I thank you for coming. I believe that the glory of the latter days, the glory of today, shall be greater than yesterday's. In Jesus' name. Let us pray. Our gracious Lord, once again we thank you because we know that you are here. You are here to bless us. You are here to increase us. You are here to touch us. You are here that our testimonies may complete. Strengthen our minds. Open our ears. Open our hearts that we may hear you clearly. And let your name be adored and glorified as we speak and as we are being heard all over the world. In Jesus' name we pray. For my name's sake, that is the title. The theme is from Isaiah chapter 48, verse 9. For my name's sake, will I defy my anger, or, and for my praise will I refrain for thee, that I cut thee not off. For my name's sake. Uh, yesterday we tried to establish the fact that what we see in the passage from verse 1 to about verse 8 is that in spite of the will I say badness in spite of the ugly fashion of the people of Israel in spite of what they were, various names, they were sick neck, they were difficult, they were impossible to be convinced, they were so many things. In spite of that, instead of God declaring the punishment on them, in spite of that, it says, I will, for my name's sake, defy the punishment. And I think that is amazing that God, 
because of his name, because of his name, he has decided to defer the punishment for the people. It's not that the people want it. No, they do not want it. In fact, the Bible says, from verse 4, I think, the Bible begins to describe them whom they were. They were very terrible. They were obstinate. And the only person you can compare with them was a goat. A goat. You, if you have seen a goat before, if you drive a goat, maybe if you are frying Gary, you drive a goat, it will just shift backwards, small. And as soon as you are doing something else, the goat will come back. It will not even go out. They were obstinate. Very obstinate. According to the Bible, their neck was hard. Stiff. They cannot bend neck in character. In other words, everything they have been doing, they kept on doing it. Those of them that were coming, were that were absent from choir, they were absent permanently. Those of them that were absent from church, they were absent permanently. Those of them who caused problems, you know, there are some people when they are not present in the church, members are happy. Very happy. You say, you know, come today. So, and such people, when they come, everybody is not, I mean, people are not happy. But they themselves are happy that people know that they are tough. There are people in the church who are happy that they are tough. And so, because they are foolish, Members of the church will be hailing them. Hey, tough man. Say yes. I don't go agree. You don't go agree. Now your house. Now, now you get the church. Say yes. In this place. Nobody. Don't go agree. You go fight to the end. For what now? Even the person who owns the church, he came and died for the church. You want to fight for the church. If you want to do something good, die. So that we know that you are fighting for the church like the owner of the church. Do what? Die. Die by yourself. Unfortunately, if you die by yourself, you will go to hell because the Bible will say that God will say that you committed what? So when I, I, I'm trying to describe obstinacy, yesterday I jumped all this. Obstinacy. Uh, people who are extremely, always difficult in the church. Not uh, the diocese of Niger Delta. No, 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 no. Does, does it happen here? It happens here. Just see somebody say, no way. I don't go agree. I don't go die. I don't, uh, now you're home. Where you won't die for? Do you know the church has already died for the church? So how it concern you? You know, I know that what I'm saying now, some people are angry with me. Don't be angry with me because truth is very bitter. Very, very bitter. Uh, maybe by tomorrow or next, I will show you some things in the Bible. You need to be careful. The way you are defending God. You have to be very careful. You need to know the Bible method of defending the work of God. I don't say don't if you see something bad, talk about it. Yes, talk about it. If you see something bad, talk about it. But by people say you don't talk and talk and talk until there's no more saliva in your mouth. And when they say, Why is there no saliva in your mouth? You say it's because I'm speaking speaking the truth. A saliva dried. No, you have to be careful. They were stiff necked, stubborn, and they did not even remember whom God was. Usually, 
instead of giving God praise, they carried the praise to idols. I don't want to talk about that because I'm sure nobody here worship any idol. And none of you watching us all over the world, none of you have idol. If we ask that they remove our dresses here now to check what is under. Somebody say under. The things we will see. We don't know that brother X is brother for up. And he alone a brethren for downstairs. Because they were deceitful. Yet, in spite Go to this, my name. Let me illustrate it with you with an experience I had so many years ago. I went to Joss to preach. It was a kind of program like this, quite a large program. And I was doing the preaching for about four, five years, I mean days, four, five days. One of the nights, we were coming back from the program, and we were coming back very late. We were coming back very late, and um, the people carrying me, that's the organization of the program, because they felt, see, we are carrying a speaker, and of course, a bishop. Therefore, police... And it was around nine o'clock in the evening. We passed the first batch. We were, we were in four batches. And we passed them. The difference between them is just a few meters. Passed the second batch. We raised hand. The reverend did not stop. And I, I wasn't awake. I guess. have dosed. You know when you doze, you don't confess that you have dosed. Just say, I guess. But when I now heard, in the name of the president, stop! The driver stopped. So it, is no, it is no longer ordinary stop. In the name of the president, that's what the police said. In the name of the... At this time, it is not whether you like the president or you don't like the president. You must do what? You must stop. Because if you don't stop, they'll fire you. So when they said in the name of the carried me was going to I I heard him from his Oh boy. God didn't tell me that police bullet will kill me. And there's no promise, there's connection between me and police. So he stopped. And they came to us, look, you are carrying the man of God, and you are driving like this. It's not a true, true man of God. It's not a true, true man of God. Then they asked me, are you a man of God? And I say, oh God, I'm not a woman, I'm a man of God. The police laugh. <laughs> name of the president. How much more, brethren, in the name of Jesus? Raise your voice and shout hallelujah. He says, or he said, stop. Let me show you Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. 
Acts of Apostles chapter 3. I'm looking at from verse 1. Where even if we read it from verse 1, Peter and John, they went together in the in the ninth hour. Bible says in verse 2, it is a certain lame man from his mother's womb. Let me show that his own case is a very serious one. Because what this usually believe is that if you are sick like that, it is because of sin. He was carried there. Who they laid daily at the gate. The gate called the beautiful gate. And for those of you who have been to Israel, you must have seen that gate. It's still there till now. It was begging for arms. When Peter and John were about to go into the temple, the man asked them for arms. And Peter, Peter, fasting his eyes upon him. John, he said unto him, Look on us. Now, look on us. Immediately means we are about to give you something. It immediately means I am the one who has what we are going to receive. It means what we are going to get now is from us. Look on us. It means that we are going to give you a huge amount that we have never received before. Look at us. And I guess the man must have been thinking that money is coming. I, I don't know whether I have given a beggar money in a moving vehicle in Lagos. And he looked at the money. He said, Okay, add more. Add more. Put something more. No, it's no, this man, this man no good, no good do anything. It's hundred naira. Hundred naira. I think you used to say that beggars have no choice. Nigerian beggars, they have choice. Okay, add more. Peter said, look on us. The Bible says in verse 5, and he gave them, he gave you to today, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Come on, glory be to God. Glory be to God. Peter said, Silver and gold. Have I known, but such as I have, I give unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Glory. We have said, Look at us. And you are looking at us. We have said, We are about to give you something. We are ready for it. But what we are giving you. Is not from us. What we are giving you, we give you in the name of the person that we have. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. What is bigger than that? Raise your voice and shout hallelujah. There used to be a chorus in this verse in those days. Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have given to thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk, walking and limping and praising God, walking and limping and praising God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and you want to try it? You want to try the song? Would you like to sing it? Would you like to sing it? Okay, it's optional. If you want to sing it, you sing. If you don't want to sing it, 
you are quiet. But I can assure you, as you sing it, everything in you that has been lame will rise. Everything bad, everything bad, everything that is not of God that has been lame will rise. And wherever you are, all over the world, listen to this. Everything in you that you want, that say, oh, how did this happen to me? Healing will come. In the name of Jesus Christ. In that, the name that is above all names. In Acts, Acts of Apostles, the Bible says, no name is given under the clouds that is greater than the name of Jesus Christ. You want to try the song? Okay, let's try. Uh, by the way, how many of you know it? I've heard it before. You know it or heard it? If you know it, raise your hand up very well. If you have heard it, put your hand near your ear. So that I will know that... Uh, okay. Can we sing it now? Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have given all to the in the name of Jesus Christ. Of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Walking and leaping and praising God. That's right. Walking and leaping and praising God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Of Nazareth, rise up and walk. The emphasis is the under name. You are not in the spirit yet. And I'll tell you the reason. Nobody hears the name of Jesus. And in the name go to Calvary and see how it is serious. You will not stand up. Silver of gold have I now. it away we are going to so relax you are going to march on the spot now to sing it after that you are going to relocate because the name of Jesus is shifting something in you there is a relocation going on something that has been stationary as if dead is coming back to life I didn't hear you amen very well. And that is for the sake of his name. Peter and John didn't do this for themselves. They did it for the sake of the name of Jesus Christ. Are you ready now? Silver and gold have I Me. Sickness, hatred, bitterness. They are doing what? What are they doing? Living. They don't they come out. They don't they come out. I, well, those of you all over the world, if you don't know the meaning of come out, come out means <laughs> wherever you are in the world, if you don't know the meaning of come out. It's very difficult to explain in English because this one is more than English. Come out means to come out. 
it means there is a root out of the place. Raise your voice and shout on here. Hallelujah. Sickness, hatred, bitterness, hunger, poverty, all these, they are commodities. The present continuous sense of commodity is commodity. <laughs> what did I say? This? They are commodity because they are being uprooted. Silver and gold have I none. That has refused to give you joy today in the name of Jesus and for the sake of Jesus is gold. It's not only gold, it's commodity. In the name of Jesus, silver and gold are now. In the world, this same power can reach you. I said, May healing come to you. For the sake of his name, may you be healed. For the sake of his name, may you receive your healing. For the sake of his name, may your prayers be answered. Somebody said, My prayers are answered. So it is in Jesus' name. Give God a merry clap of for somebody. Now listen to me. I just received something I must pronounce on now. There are some of you here we have been waiting to get married, whether man or woman. I can hear God saying to me, and I believe God is speaking, 
for the sake of his name by this time next year. During, during, this, during this Bible study conference, you are going to come out and testify to your marriage. You will not marry another man's husband. You will not marry another man's wife. For the sake of his name, you will marry the right person. It is your first time. Shout him in! The second set. Those of you who have been asking for the blessing of the womb, by this time next year, during this program, you will testify that during the Bible study conference of 2020, God began to touch the loins of your husband, God began to touch your womb, and then this is a child, 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 it shall be so in the name of Jesus Christ. What is it that God cannot do? For the sake of his name, there is power. Somebody shout power in that name. And that power is made manifest. It shall be so in Jesus' name. Name, powerful. Let us see how Jesus described the power in his name. I think we find that in Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 16. That is like uh, some of our pastors say, chapter number 16. Uh, it's an extreme tautology. Extreme tautology. Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 16. I want you to see how Jesus, by himself, introduced himself. And then, how he presented before us the power in his power. <laughs> Hallelujah. I get that. That's marvelous. Chapter 16, verse 15. Somebody should stand up and read for us. Chapter 16, verse 15. Please get microphone. And he said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go on. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Go on. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Go on. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name. Hold on. <laughs> Look at somebody talking about himself. Go into the world. Go and preach. Amazing. Eh? Evangelism team. Do what? Go into the world. Go and do what? Every Christian who must testify, every Christian who must give testimony, do you know that if your neighbor has not received Christ, when the end comes, my dear, God will hold you responsible. Right. It was at Abuja, I was telling them the story of a tract I read. The tract, the title of the tract was Nobody Told John to Come. John to Come. Two friends. One of them died. And when he died, because John had died. So when he died, he went to the gate of heaven. He told them that he wanted to come and see John. So they told him that John is not inside here because nobody told John to come. Your neighbor that is not a Christian, you need to preach to him in the name of Jesus. Don't let it go. Preach to your neighbor. Now, it says here, Jesus said by himself, 
Go ye into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be what? Saved. He that believeth not shall be what? Damned. May we not see that in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 17. And this sign shall follow them that believe in my name. That is the power. In my name. Don't go there to mention your name. Mm -mm. In my name. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Those of you in the front here, do, are you hearing me? In my name. You understand? When I donate in the church, I do, I do that in whose name? In whose name? God. The name of Jesus. When I give to the church, in whose name have I given? In the name of Jesus. When I come into the church, even when it is not my turn, I start cleaning the pews, I start getting the place ready when they did not ask me to. I am doing it not in anybody's name, but in the name of Jesus and for the sake of his name. Do you understand what I'm saying? When there is an occasion in the church and food is not enough, and they, they announced that those of us from social group, we are sorry, you will not have food. We are likely to give the food to the visitors. <laughs> Can you hear somebody say, any pastor will announce that kind of announcement? Any pastor will talk that kind of bad thing from his mouth? You God forgive him. Food no day, for, for what now? If food no day, na me cause him. I mean, they make food no day, and then they go come carry my food, give somebody else. God no go let that happen in Jesus' name. <laughs> when you decide to deny yourself, even in the church, or you deny yourself the best of all offers in His name, not for you, not for you, in His name. And for his sake. For his sake. For his sake. Read them. In my name shall they cast out devils. Where are you? <laughs> huh? Where is the person? Okay, come on, I make us you now. Maybe we don't go to the angel. The angel, they read the person. Start by. Again. And this these signs shall follow them. These signs believe, shall follow them that believe. Yes. In my name shall they cast out devils. Oh, yes, go on. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. In whose name? In my name. For whose sake? Just anyhow, turn it around, Jesus. In my name, they will cast out devils. Sorry, sir, what's your name? Bright. If somebody is sick, and you say, you did sick man, in the name of Bright, in the name of Bright, stand up! The sickness will say, Jesus, I know. Uh, I know. Introduce yourself. Because no other name can do it. And for no other sake, Jesus. I recommend that every Christian should have a labor in his room. It's amazing. I love it so much. Jesus, make it bold. Let them know that you are worshipping Jesus. Okay? When you are coming to the church, and you go and buy a small Bible, and you put it inside a handbag, and you do it like this, so that nobody will go know that you are going to the church. The Bible is inside a bag. The bag is under your armpit. That's not Jesus. 
If you carry the Bible, you show it. And people say you are proud. It's correct. Are they not right? They are correct. If anybody is proud because of Jesus, anything wrong? Nothing is wrong. I told my wife some years ago, I said, this Bible that you are taking to church, I want to change it. I went and bought a big Bible. I put it inside a cover. The cover get handle. So that when she's going to church, you know that she's going. Anything you like, you can do what? You can say. You know people talk. That's why their mouth is in the front. There are people who talk and talk and some of you here, I mean sorry, not some of you here, nobody here. Talk and what they did not send you, you will talk. What you did not hear, you will talk. What nobody told you, you will talk. Then you said, somebody said that, somebody said that, he saw that, somebody said. You can talk. And that's my attitude to life. Anything you like to say about me. And I told both my pastors and my members, they know me for that. You talk. Nothing that you say that will stop me from doing good. I will do what God has sent me to do. For his name's sake, Apostle Paul said, shame is not with me anymore. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For the sake of his name, I'm not begging you to accept Christ, but I present to you Jesus Christ of Nazareth. For the sake of his name, he says, when we touch anything deadly, it shall be okay. Serpent shall not hurt us, or anything that is serpent. If we drink anything that is deadly, they will not hurt us. And the Bible is saying here that when we lay our hands on the sick, they shall be healed. Somebody shout, I'm healed. I'm healed. Shout it last, say, I'm healed. I'm healed. Just once more, say, I'm healed. I'm healed. Therefore, any sickness in your body, because of the sake of his name, you are healed. Yeah. Any disease or anything that can hurt you, that may come along your way, for the sake of his name, you are healed. Yeah. This Koro, 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 I read in one comic book, one woman says, Corolla drivers, it shall not drive you. <laughs> it shall not drive you. Whatever name the sickness is called, you are more than conquerors. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are not ashamed of Christ. We boldly announce him. We boldly tell people we are Christians. And we live as Christians. So that the way we live will not be different from our declarations. It should be the same thing. That's why Jesus says here, anything you touch, no matter how deadly they may be, they will not hurt us. In the name of Jesus Christ. And they will not hurt us in Jesus' name. Tell your neighbor, don't, don't let your mouth be too close to your neighbor. You should not tell. But let your neighbor hear you. Say, neighbor. Neighbor. I am telling you. Important thing. Whether na kuru lao, or kuru nao, or kovido, waiting in bio, for the sake of his name, put your mouth, put your hand back. For the sake of his name, put your hand back. It shall not hurt us. Say in the name of Jesus. Say, that, say, in the name of Jesus. Now stand up, wave your hand and say, in the name of Jesus. Receive it in Jesus' name. 
For his name's sake, brethren, this disease shall not touch us. Let me give you another example. I'm sure you would like to hear this. Now let's go to let's go to Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs chapter 18. Let somebody read for us from verse 10. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 10. The name of the Lord is a strong no, tower. No, hold on. Make I open up myself. You, you, have you known the place before? I never finish. You don't. You don't do it. Me way. We be way study them. I never open it. In. Okay. Proverbs chapter eighteen, verse ten. Are you ready now? Yes, sir. Okay, read. Let's hear you. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Listen to that, brethren. The right what is a strong tower? The name again. The name again. It's a strong tower. Our names are important. But there is a more important name. There is a greater name. The name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Now read on, let's hear you. The righteous runneth into the it. The righteous runneth into it. And is safe. Wow. Wow. The righteous runneth into the name of the Lord and is saved. The righteous runneth into the name of the Lord. And is what? Safe. Protected. 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 The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it and is saved. I want to cancel our pastors. You know, some of our members are fond of phoning us. One o'clock, two o'clock in the night. They are fond of phoning us sometimes at very ugly times. And I remember when I was a chaplain in the university in those days. Somebody, you can, a, a student can be phone me. Sir, my eyes are turning me at around 2 a.m. My eyes are turning, I say, did you eat and say, no, I don't know why, but yeah, it has been turning me since, since uh, evening. And as their pastor, you must respond. Whether you like it or not. So most of the time, you just say, please, hold your phone, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus, all the eyes that are turning, particularly turning you, must cease. You, most of the time, sir, you hear them shout, Amen. And by the following morning, they come to you in the office. Thank you, sir, for yesterday. Immediately you pray. You know, they're just waiting for a point of contact to receive from God. And I don't want our pastors to hold this name. Don't hold it. Distribute it. Don't be angry. Don't be angry. That's why you left all the jobs you will have been doing everywhere. You came to become a pastor. So you must be a pastor complete. In day and in night. You know, some of you pastors, you go on and then when you want to sleep, you switch off your phone. Switch it off. No weapon fashion against me shall prosper. If you like, can call me from now till then. I know they answer you. But sometimes you discover that in switching off that phone, you have also switched yourself off from important information. Somebody may want to give you an important information that you must act upon. But since your phone is off, anything can happen. For the sake of his name, make yourself available. 
Are you hearing me? For the sake of his name, make yourself available. It says here, the righteous rose into it. And you need to be righteous. And he said, a strong tower. The name of the Lord, when you see the Lord written in capital letters, that is Jehovah. Jehovah is a strong tower. The righteous rose into it and is saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I still want to look at the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ, his name. Let us go to the beginning. In gospel according to St. Matthew, what was that name given for? What, what sake can that name produce? What power can that name produce? What is it that that name can be used for? How is it that that name can become fruitful? What is in that name? Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 1. I think that must be in verse 12. Matthew chapter 1. Matthew. She's being careful not to read it so that I will get it before she can. I, I, I can sense it. Because she wanted to start, then she remembered. Then she stopped. Okay? Verse 21. I think that one, that one will make you to know that I got it before you. Matthew chapter 1, uh, verse 21. Uh, uh, read it now. You see now? And she shall bring forth a Listen, son. Listen, brethren, this was the foundation of the name. And any time you hear, for the sake of his name, all the powers are embedded in that name. You don't let me hear you. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. Everybody shout Jesus. Jesus. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. There's a reason for that. Go, read on. For he shall save his people from their sins. Thank you. To set you free. In my place, I don't know whether it is like that in this part of uh, Nigeria. And for those of you watching us everywhere, I don't know whether it is the same thing in your place. In my place, if you hear somebody's name, you will know why they named him that name. Is that like that here? Is not, are you sure? I met one brother, one brother Abracadabra yesterday. Is that, is that what is the meaning of Abracadabra? Oh. You are bright. They gave you the name bright. Because when, as soon as you are born, you are shiny. Is that so? <laughs> I like that. In my place, when a child is born, he is given a name circumstantially. I don't know. My name, my full names are Babatunde. My native name, which I don't usually bear at all, is Minekia. Mine and that's my language, Minekia. Minekia means Awakawe. My father gave me that name because he was a teacher and pastor. He was transferred to somewhere, to a location. And when he got there, there was this young lady in his class, very brilliant lady. She was coming first, according to him. And she looked at the lady. Meanwhile, my father was transferred there to go and teach. So she saw the lady. She married her. And that is the woman that gave birth to me. And gave birth to eight more children. Sir. He now said, since I came to this place and, I, and God has blessed me so much and I have a wife, 
I've come at a good time. So they will name me Minekia, and I like the name. But so that you not be biting your tongue, that's why I don't want you to call it. And then my last grandchild, I named him Mwanekia, which means of us Wakawe. <laughs> All of us Wakawe. Because when I left Benin, when I left Benin to Calabar, all my children followed me. And we got there. The Lord began to bless us, bless us, bless us. I went there as reverend. I'm returning as archbishop. We know Wakawe. <laughs> yeah, the Wakawe passed that one. Any Wakawe passed that one, nobody will again. So, if you see the name of somebody, you will know the meaning. The Bible says here, we are going to call him Jesus. Why? Because this same man, oh, glory to God, this person we are giving birth to is the one that will save his people from their sins. God has been waiting. Who shall save them? Who shall deliver them? Wicked people. All along, for the sake of my name, I've been forgiving them. But let me send to them my son. Because oh, somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> when Jesus was going to be baptized, Bible said that the voice came from heaven like a, like a, a dove, and the announcement was made: "This, this one, this one, is my beloved son, in whom hear ye him." In other words, I waited to be pleased, waited and waited, but now he has come. So that I can be pleased. For the sake of his name, your sins are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, the sins are forgiven. That's why he now says, Go and sin no more. The Pharisees were looking at him. Will this man forgive sin? Will he forgive sin? And he announced that, I forgive you. Huh? Say so he can forgive sin? Yes, he can. When they were going to accuse him, they mentioned it that he was going about forgiving sins. Just because of time. There was a place when they took him to the people to judge him. They asked him, What is your name? Are you Jesus? Then he said, Thou seest. Brethren, our sins are forgiven. I didn't hear you hear me very well. I'm not sure you know the import of that forgiving sin. But for that, we will have gone to hell for sure. Nothing will have hindered us from hell. Is it that we will be so holy that we shall not go to hell? Nobody will have survived the punishment. Are you right? Is it anger? I'm sure some of us have been angry today for more than 100 times. Is it jealousy? Is it bitterness? Is it wrong word? Is it fornication? Is it adultery? If not for that name, will have been condemned, will have been destroyed. What is it that will have saved us? Only the name of Jesus. And that's why we are what we are. The name of Jesus. Now let me ask you. Your grace. Your grace, 10 minutes. What did 10 minutes do? Just say 10 minutes. This is exactly one hour I started. 
Is it 10 minutes? Return to sender. <laughs> what did the name of Jesus do, brethren? Somebody tell me, what did the name of Jesus do for you? For me, he saved me. He delivered me. He forgave me. He healed me. He protected me. He saw me through. He held me in his hands. He did not allow evil to touch me. He provided for you. Let me whisper one to your ear. When the pastors were trying to persecute me, he delivered me. The persecution of the pastors did not affect me. What did Jesus do for you? He showed you the way. All the way to Calvary, he went for us. Because of his name. For the sake of his name. For the purpose of his name. And for those of you watching us all over the world and in your churches, I can assure you, the moment you allow Jesus to come into you, that power, that efficacy of his power will be manifested in your life. In the name of Jesus. The reason I'm walking like this today is because of Jesus. If not for him, <laughs> for where? There are some powers in this world and they are looking at you, their decision is that you will not be something. In their eyes, you have grown up to this. You will still grow and still become better in their eyes. Why? For the sake of his name. Raise your voice and shout hallelujah. Because of his name, no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. In the name of Jesus Christ. For the sake of his name, he said he shall save his people from their sins. When they are no longer with sin, deliverance will come. In the name of Jesus. Now, finally, I want to pray for some people this evening. I do know that this program is projecting the presence and the power of God's name through his son Jesus Christ to all of us. Those who want to hold this name more, I want to follow Jesus. I want to stick to him. I can now see that no matter what the devil does, I'm victorious. I can see power in that name. There are so many other names. The names they worship you, the names of the gods they worship in your place. You know them. You know them. But it are, even those who are worshiping them, the, the God has not helped them. But the name of Jesus, when the righteous runs into it, what happens? Tonight, I am running to you, Jesus Christ. And I need you. I am going to, I know, yes, I have known you before, but from now on, I was holding you before. Jesus, at this time of Corona, I'm going to embrace you. But that is where the healing is going to come from. Some of us have problems in our minds, our lives, and we need, for his name's sake, we need to release it. Let me give you an illustration. Oh God, thank you, Father. Just hold on, I'm coming. Some of us, let's assume that this is altar. You come to the church with a lot of heavy burden. Because some of you are going to come out now when I do the altar call. And I want to advise you. Come with the body. But please, when you are going back, don't take back the body. Don't look back and say, ah, the Lord I brought is still there. After I have told Jesus, the Lord is still there. Is he going to remain here? I better make her carry my load. And carry it back. You will not go back with the problem. In the name of Jesus Christ. No matter what the devil has planned, no matter what the devil is planning, brethren, for the sake of his name, 
you are victorious. Turn to your neighbor and say you are victorious. Let us pray. Let's pray. But I want to call you out here. I want you to come, come with a testimony. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. It's always just the same. Oh, praise his holy name. That is the reason why I love him so. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. And for the sake of his name, I am coming to him to receive the deliverance, forgiveness of sins, salvation, whatever I need. Here I come, Lord Jesus. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. He is always the same. Oh, praise is so in the That is the reason why I love you so. Jesus is the sweetest thing I will. Now, as we sing it for the second time, come outside, let's unite our feet together. Something must happen today. And that thing, finally, the answer has come for the sake of his name. For his, for the sake, not for your own sake, because for us, we are parallel. But for the sake of his name. As we sing it, just come aside. Let's unite our faith together. We are receiving from the Lord right now. And what, those of you outside in your churches, everywhere, you are watching us. As the people here come out, just begin to wave your hand. And when we pray, you pray with us. For the sake of his name. Are you ready again? Jesus is the sweetest name I know. He's always on the same. Just come outside here. Come outside. Let's unite our faith. That is the reason why I love him so much. Jesus. Thank you, son. I want to hold on to you more. I want to trust you more. I can see your work. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. Oh, I can experience you. I can feel you. He's always I need you more. I want you more. Oh, where is this all the That is the reason why I love you so. I need you more, Jesus. Jesus is the sweetest name That's right. Sing it now. Jesus, Jesus. I love your name. I love. Sing it loud. Jesus, blessed Jesus, that is all I need. Please don't don't deceive yourself. This is the time you need it. If you take it back home, it could become worse. We need to disengage it now. Any shackle. Those of you not here with us in the hall, whatever you are, just be waving your hand because as you wave your hand, something is happening. And those of you who come outside there, as you come out, something marvelous, something great. This Jesus, for the sake of his name, my dear, the answer to your prayers has come. Take it again. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. He's always just the same. Oh, yes, Lord. A praise is only name. That is the reason why I love you so Jesus is the sweetest name I know. Okay. We are going to sing it for the last time. And this is a chance you have. Don't let it pass you by. I beg you in the name of God. If it is shyness because of Jesus, tell shyness to go that you are going to be blessed. Shyness, leave me. I'm going to be blessed. Because from today you are living my life. I'm going to live 
unto the Lord. Just once more, and then you get your miracle. Three go, three go now. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. Jesus Lord, begin to pray. The importance of that name in your life, begin to claim it. Claim it. Claim it. Receive it. For the sake of his name, salvation is coming to you. That's right. Deliverance is coming to you. For the sake of his name, deliverance is coming to you. For the sake of his name, the final victory is coming to you. They are going to go home this night. You will tell them, it's no longer I that live it, but the Christ that lives in me. Salvation has come. Brethren, receive it. Receive it. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Ash. There is power in his name. Hallelujah. Glory be to you, Lord. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Eternal Father, glorious God, the I am that I am. That is the way he introduced himself. He said, I am the I am that I am. Behold your children standing here and your children all over the world waving their hands. Touch everybody in the name of Jesus Christ. Touch everybody in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, reach out to us at the point of our needs. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be healing to us. Let there be deliverance to us. Let there be salvation for us. In the name of Jesus Christ. We give you praise, Lord. Because nothing with you it's impossible. Glory be to you forever. Hallelujah. And blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everybody shout amen. amen. Everybody shout amen. amen. Everybody shout amen. amen. Open your eyes. I congratulate. Look at me. I wish to congratulate you. Now, I am not kidding. You are coming back here next year. Now listen to me. What brought you out today as an agitation in your life? You are coming back to testify. By next, this time next year, you will still stand in front of the congregation of people. You will tell them the Lord has answered. And God alone for, his, for the sake of his name shall take the glory. Raise your voice and shout amen. amen. Now just move to the vestry. Let them give you further instructions. Wait. Sorry? What are they waving for? Eh? Is it, is it this way? Yeah, okay. Move to the vestry to get the further instruction. Please don't go just go there, hear what they will say. It's proper, very proper for you to hear what they say. Even if you don't like what they are saying, go and hear what you don't like. It can do you good. Many people stand up, wave your hand, say thank you, Jesus. Just stand up and say thank you, Jesus. Glory be to you, Lord. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. As we are still standing, please, can we kindly pray for His grace that the Lord will refresh Him, Lord will strengthen Him for the days ahead. For His name's sake, the Lord should refill Him.
Conclude your prayers. All our prayers are made in the name of Jesus.